from the Lord. Hey folks, Sean here. Um, I'm with Dylan and Gavin. Uh, we're going to do a real quick demo on salmon sharks. It's kind of a classic landed. We're going to go over the features that can uh, help you identify and distinguish between, say, a white shark pup, a young salmon shark, or mako, etc. They're all very similar and uh, easily commonly confused. So uh, the first thing to look for is this secondary caudal keel. It's a cut water. This is the primary caudal keel. The lamnids are most famous and noted for this high performance feature. It basically axes and chops right through the water. This also helps shed water backwards. So you can see the thing's built like a bullet, like a torpedo. All the lamins are high speed, high performance uh, fish and sharks. Juvenile white shark teeth are very similar, larger and serrated. And juvenile white sharks will have this secondary cusp on either side of the teeth, but there will be serrations. As the animals uh, mature, they'll get wider and broader. All the makos and salmon sharks included uh, will do that. All of them, uh, especially when young, have very, very sharp pointy teeth. They're sharp throughout their entire life, but they're much more narrower and claw-like uh, as their uh, youngsters. They're much more fish-oriented. Uh, larger lamnids like big makos, white sharks will actually uh, use their teeth quite well for eating even large pinnipeds, um, whale carcasses, certainly the white shark for sure. The face is pretty recognizable. The nose is compressed laterally as opposed to a white shark's which is comp compressed horizontally. Uh, makos are more cone-like and so you get this kind of a blade face. Again, First thing you want to look for, the easiest feature on a salmon shark is that secondary caudal keel. This big broad keel back here is, is kind of a signature uh, uh, piece of uh, feature for the lamnids, white sharks, makos included. Uh, very distinctive empennage. Uh, the broad tail, nearly equal uh, top and bottom is another feature that's, that's kind of unique to them. As well the other high performance, you know, bony fish, tunas, uh, billfish. All the fastest fish have this, you know, equally bladed tail. Pretty much everyone knows to distinguish male, female, you look at the uh, pelvic fins. If you see a shark, you want to determine is it a male or female. This is a female, so the cloaca, uh, and a male will have two appendages attached to their pelvic fins that basically serve uh, a copulatory purpose, like a like a penis on a mammal. They have two of them, though. Uh, again, unlike most fish, uh, a lot of these sharks uh, copulate and as well give birth to uh, live young. Um, certainly all the uh, lamnids do that. So male, female, look to the pelvic fins. Again, first thing you want to look for, the easiest feature on a salmon shark is that secondary caudal keel. This big broad keel back here is, is kind of a signature uh, uh, piece of uh, feature for the lamnids, white sharks, makos included. Uh, very distinctive empennage. Uh, the broad tail, nearly equal uh, top and bottom is another feature that's, that's kind of unique to them. Are there other shark species that have the adipose fin or is it just salmon sharks? Pretty much all the sharks have this second fin. It's very common on, on most uh, uh, fish as well. It's typically regarded as an adipose fin on salmon and some of the you know the uh, other fish. But second dorsal is the is the the term I use and is most commonly used by by others. Um, the anal fin as well. Um, that same question asked about this, like say squalus acanthia. Some of the squalus sharks you know don't have that. It's kind of a recognizable feature. They're kind of an older uh, archaic form. I don't know why they don't need it, and these ones do. Uh, but clearly, it's it's like a trim tab. You know, a lot of the the, the I, you know, hydrodynamics are, are uh, the same principles used uh, in regards to uh, aircraft aviation. So these should be regarded, you know, as fins. In this case, the, the, this big broad keel is like a blade. You know, it goes through the water really quickly. It's got this uh, caudal peduncle, precaudal peduncle. It's a breakwater, causes cavitation. You know, reducing resistance there and adds to the. Uh, the pressure on the control surface, which is this, you know, big broad tail, uh, and then this additionally appears to serve as uh, not only a cutwater but a channel. Uh, again, I suspect uh, 
um, aiding in, in quick burst speed, maintaining top speeds. You know, salmon sharks may rival the Makos uh, as uh, fastest shark for short bursts. I think that uh, Makos are likely the fastest, but uh, I think it's underappreciated how quick and nimble uh, and powerful these salmon sharks are. They're not going to bite a human. Uh, there's some reports of larger, uh, largely rare uh, sized salmon sharks in the past adults biting rain mammals uh, they were much more common at one point you know almost 10 feet long it's rare to find one you know over eight nine feet long there's been some diminishment but it's, it's a good healthy stock they're, they're an edible shark uh, more common and uh, used in uh, Alaska uh, they travel well south down into Mexico in the open central eastern Pacific you know between here and Hawaii uh, they travel deeper in the water column you know where the water is is uh, more suitable to their uh, preferences. They're a temperate water shark. They're they're warm bodied, um, and uh, I think one of the coolest coolest sharks around. Is the secondary keel? Is this the only salmon shark that has? Is this the only species of shark that actually has a secondary keel? The only yeah, it is. It's 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 the only lamb. And it's the only shark that has it this distinctive. Um, I notice how small the second dorsal fin is. Does the does the shark actually have? Uh, Manipulative control over it, uh, or does it simply drift along with the current to help with its? Yeah, it, it actually does have uh, some ability to, to move. There's not a lot of musculature there, you can tell, but it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. And as well, if you notice behind here, it's actually very smooth, and that actually helps facilitate the movement of not only this as an example, but this may be a better example that the shark doesn't need to move the entire fin, just a very precise area again like a trim tab and the skin here is uh, smooth to help facilitate at under speed under pressure ease and quickness of, of movement and adjustments